We have two people joining us online. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. All right. Um, good morning, everybody. We've got um, <clears throat> Coach Plitzwhite and um, two players with us today. Coach, if you want to start with the opening statement, and then we've got a few um, people joining us online that will um, ask some questions. Well, first of all, I'd say this about our team is that they care a great deal. They care a great deal about each other. They care a great deal about representing the University of South Dakota at a very high level, and they compete. You know, and then the bottom line is we get to play a basketball game today. So this is kind of a fun opportunity for us, and we're looking forward to it. Zach, go ahead. Hey, ladies, it's just me in terms of the beat Rodgers this morning, I guess. But um, how nice is it that you, you ladies do get to turn around and play another game based off what happened, the disappointment after Tuesday night? Well, I'll answer that by saying, uh, you know, we were down nine to start the fourth quarter, and I thought our kids competed at an incredibly high level and showed a great deal of resiliency. So I, I really am proud of our young ladies for how they competed in that game. And I, I really believe that we're going to be proud of how our young ladies compete again. Dom, what, you, what have you seen on film from Tuesday night, especially in that stretch, especially late defensively, that maybe can be adjusted going into this afternoon? Well, I think we play a very different style of, of opponent. And so our goal certainly is always to get stops. And, you know, I thought, again, I thought our kids did a great job. We were down and we came back. And in order to come back, you got to get stops. And, you know, maybe we needed one more stop, you know, but certainly our kids are, are going to continue to learn and continue to grow. You doing all right, Hannah? I saw you were banged up a little bit in that second half. Are you feeling all right? Yep. I think that's just part of playing in your sixth or fifth year of basketball. And <laughs> Um, we took some time this week to recover, and I feel ready to go. Chloe, what do you think about last year's game against uh, South Carolina that maybe you can go into tonight's game with? Um, you know, I think playing any team, um, having the experience, um, the familiarity, I guess, a little bit, playing them the past few years um, is always good. You know, we'll, we'll use anything we can get. They're a great team. Um, we expect nothing less. We're going to do what we can, and – um, give it our best shot. All right, I'm good. I, I guess to go ahead. I'm Augusta Stone from the state newspaper based out of Columbia. Um, can you guys hear me? No. no, 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 no. Oops, sorry. sorry. Can you hear me now? A little loud, Augusta. Okay, can you hear me now? I'm so sorry. I don't know if there's an audio issue. No, um, no. Uh, uh, Bailey, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Hannah, coming off of a tough loss, what do you guys have to kind of, what have you been working on over the last couple of days to get ready for this game against South Carolina? Yeah, we took some time to look at the film and um, it gave us some really good learning opportunities. It's early in the year and playing tough teams like Oklahoma and South Carolina um, only give us opportunities to learn and grow. So it's definitely a, a good week for us to get back in the gym. And Chloe, you guys knew that you're scheduling a really tough non-conference, that there's going to be some tough games in there. You know, how important is it to try and go out there and get a win here before, um, you know, you go down to the Virgin Islands and play, you know, even just as tough of opponents? I mean, we're not trying to lose. So, you know, that's we go into every game trying to win regardless of the opponent. Um, yeah, like Hannah said, or and you said, we've got, you know, tough non-conference schedule. Um, only gives us opportunities to grow and learn and, and uh, be better as we get down the road. And coach, this is the third time you guys have scheduled South Carolina for a non-conference opponent. How difficult, or why, why do you continue to try and schedule, you know, a really strong opponent, you know, other than being a strong opponent? Well, first of all, you schedule who you can get to schedule, you know, and we play who we can play. Second thing is we promised these young ladies when we recruited them that we're gonna compete against the best. It doesn't get any better than this. So this is a great opportunity for us, and it's something that we're looking forward to. And how big is it to be able to play them in Sioux Falls in South Dakota for the second straight year, same building, um, you know, having them travel up here. Obviously, you guys did the first time you played, but now the last two years playing up here. Well, certainly it's not home court for us. We would love to play them in the Sanford Coyote Sports Center. That would be the ideal situation, but this is the next best situation for us, and so we're looking forward to it. It's great. Great. Hopefully we have a great turnout of our South Dakota fans 
the University of South Dakota fans come out and support. It's right here in Sioux Falls, so hopefully recruit some Sioux Falls natives to come see. All right, I don't think I have any more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Perfect. You. Thanks, Al. <clears throat> We'll have we'll have Coach Staley. Geez, we'll have Coach Staley. We'll have Coach, Coach Staley, Staley and uh, Leah Boston. Uh, uh, yeah. Muted. Zach, can you hear me? but he can't. Zach, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Check, check, one, two, three. Zach, can you hear me? Yeah, check, check, one, two, three. Yeah. All right, so. Zach, can you give me a mic check? Mic check, one, two, three. Mic check, one, two, three. Check, check, one, two, three. Well, it's like, 
is that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm using the talks. Okay. I'm not touching anything on here. So am I ready to go? I'll take you. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Coach Staley, Aaliyah, uh, thanks for joining us. We've got um, three people online who will be asking some questions. Coach, if you just want to start with a quick statement about being back in Sioux Falls and playing uh, South Dakota, and then we'll get to some questions. Yeah, we're, we're, we're super, super excited. You know, the times that we've been here, other than one, <laughs> we've had, um, you know, we've had some, some great moments um, playing competitive basketball. It's always, uh, it's always pretty cool to come here and play a team like South Dakota because they give us an opportunity to compete against a different style of play. And I, I will say it does prepare us for uh, what we may see in, in March and April. All right, we'll start with Bailey Zupke. Go ahead, Bailey. Well, you, you know, Coach kind of mentioned it. You guys played this team last year, and you were tied at the half. How important is it to get out and get rolling quickly this this evening against South Dakota? Um, it's definitely important to um, come out and have a quick um, quick start. Um, they're a great team, and they shoot the ball really well. So they're never ever fully out of a game because of how well they shoot the ball. So it's just good for us to come out, get a quick start, and keep the lead. Is there a different feeling knowing there's going to be some fans in the in the stands this time around? You're probably going to see a, you know a few more South Dakota fans um, in in the stands this time around. Um, yeah, it's, it's but I mean we already had one game where we had fans that were more than Gamecock fans, so I think that we had a great we had a hold on we had a chance already, so we already know what that feels like. <laughs> and coach, to go into this arena again, um, what makes this kind of arena, this environment unique to maybe some of the other places you've uh, coached at? Um, I, I think the fact that it's, a, you know, a female ran <laughs> event, um, bad boy mowers, um, lends a, you know, a, a, a woman's touch. So all the details of an event that makes uh, a, a program a coaches and players feel very, very comfortable. Um, it's always great for us. Um, the basketball will take care of itself, but when you, uh, when you treat people um, like, like uh, first-class citizens, they feel it. That's why we continue to come back uh, for more than just the basketball. And why, why do you continue to, what's the appeal to scheduling a team like South Dakota, you know, whether it's down in South Carolina, like you did two years ago or the last two years up in Sioux Falls, what's the appeal of a, a team like South Dakota on your schedule? Um, I mean, playing a, a team like South Dakota, um, they help when it comes to strength of schedule um, and, and doing it at a, you know, a neutral site or, or just being in, in South Dakota helps us. So we, 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 we think about these things. We're strategic when, uh, we're we're scheduling because we want to, you know, at the end of the day, we want the the number one overall seed because it 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 has some uh, advantages uh, when you're you're playing in a tournament like the NCAA tournament. Go ahead, Zach. 
Lady, he's kind of bouncing off of Bailey's last question there. What does this kind of event do for women's basketball? Arizona and Louisville were playing before you ladies play South Dakota. How nice of an event is it to put some eyes on women's basketball? Well, I, I, I feel like, um, I mean, there are a, a lot of storylines that are created uh, with playing competition like this. Uh, I think uh, us, South Dakota, Louisville and Arizona, and you know, we're, we're unafraid to play competitive basketball early in the schedule because we're we're using this to measure where we are as a as a team and where we're trying to go. And I think it's just overall great for the game to be able to to schedule uh, games such as this, and it, it it can only help everyone the the competitors, the teams, um, and overall women's basketball. What do you remember from last year's game and maybe even watching it from film this week if you did that maybe you'll implement going into this tonight, just remembering in the front of your mind? Well, I think Aaliyah touched on it. Um, playing a team like South Dakota, a team that is never really out of basketball games because their ability to shoot the ball, their ability to spread you out, their ability to pass and screen and, and get people the ball in positions where they are, where they are great. Um, it's always a challenge. And for us, uh, we, we, we definitely, it challenges our defense to, to stay on point, to be able to see things and react and um, just, just combat what, they are, what they're doing. And then from an offensive standpoint, uh, they do a really good job of being physical, um, playing the gaps and forcing you to take shots that, uh, uh, ill-advised shots, coach, shots that coaches don't always want you to take. So overall, it, 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 it challenges us. It's like a chess match. And Glenn Hill just joined us. Go ahead, Glenn, if you have questions for Coach Staley or Aaliyah. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. 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 Awesome. Um, hey, guys, thanks, uh, thanks for the time. Hey, uh, Dawn, I have a quick question about the, um, the nets that, that coaches received this week. And hopefully this isn't too rambling of a question, but um, – Going back to 2017, uh, I recall that you gave many, I guess, like replica championship trophies to some of your former players. In this particular case, I guess it's been three or four years since you cut down the nets that coaches received this week. And it sounds like part of your, your thought process was figuring out what was the right thing to do with it, who to give it to. If that's the case, can you talk a little bit about the timing of those, uh, giving those nets out? and why it was so important to invest the time and energy in, in making the right gesture uh, this time around. Um, I, I gave national championship trophies out to all of my former players at Temple and South Carolina and all the coaches that I've coached with because uh, they, they all believed um, in that moment well before it was realized. So uh, I had to go back and just thank them. And that's the way that I, I chose to thank them. Um, and then before we won, like two years before we won the national championship, Carolyn Peck gave me a piece of her uh, 1999 national championship uh, net. And I carried it with me for, for two years. And she just said, take this when you win a national championship, um, give it back, but also pay it forward to uh, another coach. And I, I just, there's so many great coaches out there. I, I just couldn't pick one. So I just kind of discussed with uh, Carolyn Peck. Um, I, I I can't I can't we we couldn't come up with. I wanted us to come up with who the next coach should, should receive it. But there's so many. So I just said um, in a, an interview when I, I was doing the interview. I don't, I think we were doing the diary for the entire season. And I just said it'd be pretty cool to give you know all of the black coaches who are coaching at the Division One level uh, a piece of the net because it was. It's a tangible thing that sometimes when you're going through things day to day that you don't feel like you can see your way through it. And then that little nylon piece of string, somebody called it dental floss, <laughs> thought it was funny. Um, it, it, it just rejuvenates you to just continue and it gives you that reason to keep pushing. And I just felt like it was only befitting that I, I, I do it in that manner. And I didn't do it in a manner um, to to receive anything besides just pay it forward for what what it what it did for me, and I and I think it was received uh, well. If uh, if I could ask a quick follow up, 
what is your impression on the increased uh, success and and numbers of, of black women who are coaching in the game? Um, it's just that. I mean, uh, I know that um, black women don't get as much of an opportunity in our sport or probably in our, you know, in our world and in, in boardrooms as 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 their their counterparts. And I, I just like to shed light on it, you know, to let them know that um, you're you're valued. Um, you are, you know, you're in a position of, of leadership, and, and sometimes you need some people who have been through it to 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 lead the way and it's only right for me and it's nothing against you know other races or anything but I'm a black woman I, I, I identify as that and there are other people there are challenges that black women face not only in sport but all over all over all over the world um, and, and sometimes they need a you know a, a ray of hope to say hey keep pushing keep leading you're doing it the right way. And I just feel like I, I, it is an honor of mine to use my platform um, to advance them in this way. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Aaliyah. Good luck tonight. Thanks. Thank you. That was a great answer. <laughs>